word. Hey everyone, and welcome to another week of the B Side Word. We're a group of people from around the world, and we like to discuss interesting articles. I'm Emma, and I'm sat here with Devin. Hello. Maxi. Hello. And Alexander. What's up? What's up? What's up? CJ's still away. He is still sick. No, it's not coronavirus, but <laughs> hopefully he will be back with us soon. And I think we're just going to get into the straight ar- first article straight Let's get away. Straight into it, mate. Bees. Bees knees. Bees knees. So, in California, Pasadena, a nine one one call went out saying someone's just been stung by mm. a bee. Yeah. And they're like, uh, okay. Um, is there a video? Uh, yeah, apparently. I didn't mean to play it like that. but. Well, I think there's a video. I haven't seen it yet. But someone calls and says someone's been stung by a bee, um, but I feel like there's more bees in the area. Okay, <laughs> right? So it's a kind of unusual. You you wouldn't use your corner. Yeah, you're not <laughs> like, calling 911. Like imagine on the beach, like someone gets stung and then people start calling 911. Anyway, she just, like the person that called felt like, Mm, I feel like this is going to go a bit south. So first responder was a firefighter or some firefighters um, and gets out the, the truck and starts getting attacked by bees. Wait, wait, wait. a lot hold more on, bees. Huh? You, you, I feel like you skipped over like a, a good chunk of this story. Which part? So they call 911 for a bee sting. Yep. And mm-hmm. firefighters respond to it. So they called nine one one. What did they say to them? The woman called nine one one. I don't have the exact dialogue, but she said, oh. "There's someone being stunned by a bee, but I feel like it's going to get a lot worse because I c- there's quite a few bees around. Like she could just sense something wasn't right, and there was quite a few bees, like more than <laughs> her bee senses were tingling. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me if my if this exact um, beginning to the story isn't quite right, but basically that's the essence. So then police and, well, firefighters arrived first. and But not like a whole, I don't think it was the whole truck of firefighters. I think it was just like first responder, firefighter, whatever. He gets out the car, starts getting stung by quite a lot of bees. (laughs) And his first first thought was like, I've got to get back into the car or truck, whatever it was. Um, But then he remembered that his partner is, has like allergic reactions to bee stings. So he's like, I can't get in the car because then if some bees follow me in, my partner's going to die, basically. So he's just ha- like there getting stuck. Why did his partner go with him to a bee? That's, That's what I was call thinking. Out. <laughs> <laughs> the worst <laughs> partner, I don't worst know. partner to have. I don't know. And <laughs> they were like, you know, like routine call, like nine one, like who's in the area? We got a crazy lady saying there's a bee. Like just thinking it's just like I don't know. Let's just go check it out because we have to. Anyway, so yeah, poli- the firefighters getting stung, and police arrive, and they start getting attacked, and. They had to eventually call a beekeeper in. There was this... Uh, Wouldn't that be the first? Anyway, yeah, yeah. There was a hive, <laughs> which was like between a building and a hotel roof or something. The beekeeper estimated thirty to 40,000 bees. Wow. Wow. And they had to cordon off like the area yeah. for public safety. And they were using like um, foam and CO2 extinguishers to like try and like disperse the bees um but what they're a bit of a one-trick pony these firemen aren't they (laughs) yeah they're like (laughs) (laughs) that's our line of defense (laughs) fire we have extinguishers bees we have extinguishers (laughs) you're stuck up a tree extinguishers (laughs) yeah i think the firefight like the jumps off the tree shh yeah, I think the firefighter that that was the first responder like put a call through and he's like, basically, there's a block long swarm of bees. That's like how they described it. Could you imagine like walking out your house and seeing like a block long? I'm trying That's to like find. Worst um, it's literally like a the wor- sky like goes worst dark nightmare. as they fly over oh, you. Oh wow! Did you see a picture? Yeah, there's a picture here. Show. Uh, I'm gonna put it on WhatsApp. Now apparently these bees were according to the beekeeper, Africanized bees, um, which is basically a term. 
<laughs> which refers to hybrid of the African honeybee. <laughs> it's getting worse, right? But it's a hybrid of the African honeybee and European honeybees, and they're usually more aggressive than like other types of bees, like also called oh, yeah. the killer bees. That's why they're basically. called African bees, is it? Africanized. These African American bees. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they, if they were, if they were, but, if they were know, white American bees, they, they wouldn't have distinguished them just, like that, would they? They would have given more respect. They would have said. Um, they said they're honeybees. It's no, they were a hybrid. A hybrid. That's what the beekeeper thinks. Yeah. But so, uh, can I call myself WhatsApp. hybrid because I'm mixed race? I like the idea of being <laughs> a hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> hybrid Maxi. That's a what whole lot of bees. Hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Um, this devs put this an image. So ridiculous. I think. Oh my! I just imagine like the first, the first fire responders going out. This is the kind of thing like in the fire department, right? They're, I don't. What do they do? That they're in the gym and they're like researching best ways to look after fires whilst there's no fires actually <laughs> happening. And then, and then this bee thing comes along. We're like, oh, just send the intern out, like. Go and deal with the bees. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> Some in the intern on his like you first month on the shift like hops out and then <laughs> just gets attacked by thousands of bees. What's uh, what but of... you know when you when I when I envisioned this swarm of bees, I envisioned envi- I always have problems with that word. Envisioned them yeah. having gaps between them, mm. like gaps between them and flying. But when you look at the picture, it's literally like they're connected, like all one movement you know like fish when they all move at the same yeah i don't understand the story though you said as soon as the guy got out of the bloody truck the fire he truck he started getting stung he started getting stung yeah that means everyone in that yeah. area were getting st- that's why they had to cordon it off no but before no i think he it was like the start and how more and more cordon came off a, the bees how do you cordon off an area <laughs> yeah it's not as if they're gonna pay attention to that um cordon there. oh we can't go past that Mm, he's caught in oh, it yellow off, tape. No, no, no. <laughs> you reckon they had like a queen I bee trapped know. in the, the roof or something? And Beyonce, just... maybe Beyonce was there. <laughs> what? <Maybe>. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. Oh, me. man. <laughs> I missed that. Yeah, Beyonce was trapped in a roof. <laughs> so... There's so many just strange elements to this story. Like, I, I for the... <laughs> As you were clearly aware at the beginning, don't even understand why they showed up to start with. <laughs> like, I, well, they have I to I, because, I like, people are, like imagine you're just walking down the road. You've come out of Macy's. I say Macy's because that's what, what they seem to love over there. And then, like, <laughs> you you turn around, yeah, and there's a block and you get of stung. bees. Like, what do you do? No, but mm. that's not that's that's at least not how it was painted. It was painted a woman called up going, I've been stung <laughs> by a bee, but I have a feeling this is bad. And they went, All right, we'll send firefighters to you <laughs> <laughs> With their sirens on and right. everything. Yeah, <laughs> like if if it started with her going, Yeah, there's a block there's a block long swarm of bees, then yeah. I'd have been a bit more understanding. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just double check. 911 call <laughs> spiral blah, blah blah yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Isn't she it- just said the caller observed several bees in the area and may have had several. a sense that things could take a turn mm-hmm. so the first firefighter arrives I mean starts right. getting attacked how would you describe how would you describe like if you're going to call your 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 emergency um call like uh, whoever it is how would you like you ring up i need help there's a lot of bees like how would you describe it to the um operator? i would use the word thousands thousands yeah. i would use that word i don't think there's i would call 911 if I, if that was happening to me like i don't think that would enter my head i don't know why who would you call so, yeah i i wouldn't I call emergency know. services I, I don't i don't i don't i actually don't know but i i don't think it would be 911 or would you try to fix it yourself I'd probably you get like heaps start... of wasp spray and then shh. You know how like dogs, um, <laughs> you know how like with dogs, Emma. when you run and they're like, um, that it's in their instinct to, to run, like, to chase you. I wonder if bees, if it's in their instinct to chase a running person. So like, if you start running, is that going to help or no? Oh man. Imagine that. Imagine 40,000 bees following you whilst you're trying to run away. 
Because you guys know that I've spoken about bees before and that is the African bee or the killer bee. I'm just thinking about cartoon, 40,000 bees chasing you and then you jump into the water and they just hover up. No, that's true. That's actually true. (laughs) Just wait for you. That's true. (laughs) What? That is true. So the African bee or the killer bee does chase you (laughs) and it will wait you. It will wait you out. It will wait for you. So if you go into it, they say do not enter water and go under thinking that they'll just go away because they're going to wait. So as soon as you come up, they'll get you. Or if you go into what do a they house, want from you? I don't get it. <laughs> if you go into a house, they'll wait and they'll wait until you like come out, unless you're going to stay in there what? for like 24 hours. Something. That's what. Like, w- uh, what point do they give up? Like this. Usually, bees will doesn't... only go about uh, less than 100 meters or something, but the African ones can oh, go. Oh, I'm miles. gone. I'm gone. 100 meters. I'm not outrunning a bee. 100 meters. I'm, I'm giving up after 50 steps. <laughs> It's like, oh, you got me. 50 steps. <laughs> you got me. Got. Okay, so it says... Usain, Usain Bolt's like, oh, that's less than 10 seconds. Dev's like, nah, can't do it. Not gonna happen. <laughs> hands, hands up, you got me. Okay, yeah, this, look, this there does... you go. Actions that people should avoid during an attack include swatting at bees, which just makes them all angry, jumping into water... Um, because they'll just wait you, wait for you to surface. <laughs> like this is legitimate. <laughs> but Spraying I, 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 a person I know in being movies, attacked with a hose. I can see in movies it happens that people jump in waters. But if you're fully clothed, probably with your mobile in your pocket, and you're running away from the bee, do you think you're going to jump in water mm. as a? No, I don't. Oh, I don't know. And also, they can go quite fast. They can go about twelve to fifteen miles an hour. But hu- most Ooh. healthy humans can outrun them. But yeah, the Africanized ones will chase for about a mile or something, <laughs> which is a long way. Most, a mile, most, 12 to 15 oh, miles per hour. Mm-hmm. Or three most quarters. Most healthy yeah. humans mile. can outrun them, but are most humans healthy? Because mm. I don't, th- I don't think the average human can outrun that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Twelve to fifteen. You, I mean, like you walk, you walk about three miles per hour, don't you? It take you. It take you five, five minutes. Twelve, twelve miles an hour. No way. Oh, I think you can run. It does say to run. Tomorrow. It says to run. Oh yeah. Oh. If other that's people, that's a fast. I can't. I can't run. run a mile in five minutes. <laughs> no. But you can run twelve miles per hour for like a hundred meters. Here are some triggers for killer bee or bee sw- like to attack. Ready? Loud noises like barking dogs, car horn, or blaring radios. Vibrations from machinery, chainsaws, weed eaters, lawnmowers, blah. Strong, strong odors like perfumes. Yeah. Shiny jewelry. How about a shiny, shiny jewelry? Yeah. How about a shiny jewelry? And head? dark colored clothes. That's so totally... Maxie's getting stung. Alexander's getting stung. I don't know about me. I don't wear any bling bling. But if you <laughs> if you're like like <laughs> Let's let's go get for a night out and like put on the perfume, put on some a night chains, out, but they sleep. Chains, they sleep. They don't like they're not active at night. Black, you know, all black. Oh yeah. No summer. You're ruining Emma's analogy. <laughs> She's still <laughs> well, going. Maybe you go into a barbecue or some nice <laughs> yeah, Aussie bar. Right. There you go. There Let's you go. go to a barbecue. Barbecue yeah, yeah, in the right. daytime. <laughs> <laughs> and then your husband, like, as he's saying bye to you, whips out the chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> it's like definitely getting. Um... Well, I just bring a chainsaw in the car. <laughs> oh, I meant when I said could, chainsaw, could it just honk the horn or something? <laughs> and why am I bringing a chainsaw to the barbecue? <laughs> I said when what you're movie saying, are we when you're saying bye to me, like, uh, oh, see you later, honey. Have a good. <laughs> yeah. Have a good barbecue. Just whip out the <laughs> chainsaw. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think I meant whip a snipper. <laughs> It's even worse. I mean, Why would I have a whippersnipper? Because you're doing the lawns. I don't know. <laughs> or um, maybe as you get out of the car and your back's turned to him, he just honk the horn. Oh, yeah. that could, that's a bit more um, <laughs> yeah, <that's> yeah. <laughs> realistic. This week on Max Facts. Max Facts. Max Facts. Max Facts. Max Facts. Thanks. Max Facts. <laughs> okay, so Max Fact this week. In 1811 in Britain, there were quite a few 
people called Mary. Female people called Mary. Not really males. But I want you to try and guess what percentage of British women that were alive were named Mary. Wait, Wait what? Not, what? Not born and named that year. <laughs> as in all of the population, all of the women population in Britain, how many of them as a percentage were named Mary? When? Ooh. In 1811. In 1811? Yeah. Okay. Um, 90. 90%? <laughs> 90%? <laughs> if, it's that high, if it's that high, this is one of the most amazing facts ever. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with like a... <laughs> Dib said 80. I said 80. <laughs> I would go like I don't know, like seventeen or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm worried now. You guys are such a high number. The fact isn't impressive. <laughs> <laughs> in eighteen eleven, yeah, nearly twenty five percent of all women in Britain were named Mary. That's really uh, impressive to me. That's hugely impressive one in to four. me. <laughs> Which is very impressive. <laughs> Not ninety <90%. laughs> percent. Nine like, in ten were called Mary. <laughs> you just say, you just say hi, Ma- hi Mary. Oh, hi. Hi, Mary. Oh, I'm not Mary. Oh, you're not? Oh, that's yeah. weird. <laughs> like, the one kid. Weirdo. Pa- the, par- the parents, their friends are like, oh, what, what did you name her? Oh, Sally. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> are, you having, are you having a boy or a Mary this year? <laughs> 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 but okay and then a follow up fact on that is in in 2011 how many how many babies were named Clive in when in when 2011 zero I'll go 5% I'll go <laughs> are we doing 5%? percentages or what in 20 people <laughs> have you met a Clive <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go uh Wait, what did wait. I say? Did this, I say? Is the, this is in the UK as well. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, I'm not asking for a percentage now. There's about 700,000 babies born a year. I'm going with zero. Oh, okay. I'll How say many five. were named Clives? Five. Five Clives. Five Clives. <laughs> because it rhymes or because that's what you get? Because I said 5%, so five. 850. 850? Oh my, I said 5%. If, I, if it was so. 850, I wouldn't have brought this fact to the table. It's four. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Four. So at, technically, if there we go prices right, I won. Yeah, you won. I went too high. Oh, they got oh, could you bust it? Price is right. Oh, if you go over, price you bust. Price is right. You're right. Okay, Alexander, what's your article? It's about a girl who, uh, she had to have a hand transplant. Why? Don't know. But she had to have a hand transplant. And she got these hands from a deceased 20-year-old man. And when they attach the hands, there's a picture in this article that you can see. Um, I don't know if you all got the article up, but for people yeah, listening, if you haven't seen it. Essentially, it's, it's the, you can see the hands after the transplant has been done and then you can see the hands now and i believe um it's been a couple years or or a year or something like that um but the hands have completely changed color and now they match the girl's skin tone whereas initially they were a very different color to her skin tone and they're saying like this is the first time that they've seen this happen like first of all hand transplants aren't very common but generally transplanting other people's body parts Typical, like the, the, what's the what's the word I'm thinking of? Yeah. Um, the pigment in the skin wouldn't change, so it's kind of just been like a bit of a baffling. What's going on? I just thought it's cool. I it's interesting. I want um, to see this hand. Hang on. Wait, you told me about this article, didn't you, Dev? No, I, I did. I'm, I I I really want to know the science behind it. I don't want to. I I don't know what else to ask. I want to know the science, but you don't know the science, do you, Alex? Definitely You're... not. Definitely do Man. not know the science. What, but what she said, they said so her, curious. What color is the man? So in the picture, I'll I'll try and send you guys the picture. In the picture, the guys, um, the hands were very dark, and she's yeah. uh, she's light light skin, like 
uh, sort of like mixed race light. Tan. Tan, yeah. I don't, I don't know the spectrum of describing. If you look, I'll sort of like that. mine. So yeah, if you want to say Emma versus who do we all know? Um, no, like like Joel and Bede or someone. Do you all know Joel and Bede? Yeah. I don't. Kanye know. West. Kanye West. <laughs> Let's just okay. say. Let's just say a mixed race person versus a black person. Although I think this person's Indian. Yeah, so I've, I've sent a picture <laughs> to the group now. So why wouldn't we just so say So many Indian? variables. <laughs> Basically, there was a light brown and a dark check, brown. Check. That's, that's what we can say, say, right? Let's say that. I love how Alex, Alex, Alex Hannah goes, who do we all know? Joel M. <laughs> 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 so I was like, First name that came to mind. Uh, <laughs> um... Well, yeah, this is interesting. The pigmentations change to match hers. Like, completely but Wait, changed. but you can't see... Is that re- is it the same hands, number one, first of all? Yes, and why so that, did you... the, the first picture is just, is just after the transplant. Okay. So she wanted a male hand on her. I don't think she wanted. No, no, no. Maybe she, there was no choice. She wanted hands. <laughs> I don't think there's a big catalogue of <laughs> hands you can choose from. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. Who would you like us to kill? Yeah. Here's a line of people. We'll take one of them out and take their hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a chance like you get what you're given i thought she wanted to open bees by like she, wa- <laughs> she wanted to just go you know what it's- <laughs> globally there's only been less than 200 hand transplants ever conducted oh, oh gosh. i think it's crazy i'm i'm super shocked you can even transplant hands i, I know that's, that's, too, that's yeah. what i'm shocked about too yeah like uh, Dev, you're wild. an electrician, right? You know how complicated it is when do you know when you have to retrofit some sort of uh yeah yeah yeah, you have to yeah. Look at all the wires like where do the, there's so many wires that look redundant? Where do you put them? Imagine cutting a hand open and saying which one of these wires are yeah what goes where? They're not they're not color coded. No, <laughs> I, I assume they're not. You're like where the fuck's the ground wire? This is not a safe. <laughs> this is not a safe piece of equipment. <laughs> oh man! So, so I've, I've done a little bit more reading. And found that the possible explanation is because of... So I didn't actually know this about pigmentation. I didn't realize pigmentation was just like... The, the darker you are, it's because you have more pigmentation. Like, I thought pigmentation was just like... A, uh, I don't know, like... I, I don't know. I don't know what I thought it was. But apparently... Okay, no, what- the more pigmentation you have, the darker you are. So because she's lighter, she produces less oh, um, melanin. Oh, wow, wow, wow. So that's possibly why the hands got lighter. That's interesting. That is really interesting. But it also the, says the size of the hand changed. Yeah, it said the shape and stuff. Yeah, because look at the look at the photo up the top, Ems. The the her her um I've changed article. Oh, have you? Yeah, but it did change. The hand cha- the hand size changed. Is that what we're saying? Well, the shape or something. This it took thirteen hours to do the transplant. Did it change because she was giving less um, male hormones? Like um, there was, there's more estrogen, and is that why the hand started to change? I don't know. Maybe like your your cells regenerate frequently, right? Yeah. So I think within seven to ten years, every single cell in your body, apart from some brain cells, maybe I can't remember which seven, ones are. Seven years, I think. Seven You're to from- ten years, every single cell in your body is a new cell, like compared to what it was seven oh, years ago. There's man. no cell which is the same, right? Yeah. So you're like a completely new person. There might be some brain cells which don't change. I can't remember, which is, I'm Whoa. not sure, whatever. But well, so the idea that every single cell in the hand, when it replaces a cell, it won't do a direct replacement. It will do. It will replace it with a cell that her DNA knows how to make, right? This is all very theory. I'm just sort of making this up off the top of my head. That might explain why. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the, the shape, shape and stuff changes. It also says wow. the shape because it's taken on a more feminine shape could be the muscles adapting to the new to her. Um, hmm. Yeah, the nerve begins to send That's signals. Crazy. It's called reinnervation. Muscles function according to body needs, so the muscles in her hand may have started adapting to a female body. So. So this is uh, just to be honest. Sort of, I'm yeah. more surprised. I'm, it blows me away more that you can put a hand on someone's body and it yeah. works. Yeah, than that it changes color afterwards. And it's functional. The the hands functional. So Eighteen actually, months of point. physical therapy improved the motor control of her arms and hands. Wow. Her handwriting almost matches her original. Wow. 
That is so mental. It is. She lost. That's it's so really mental. sad. She lost her hands in a bus accident. Oh, but she's on the plus side. She got new hands. Yeah. 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 And that's, that, and the poor me, that's gentleman. Nuts. And it was done in India, was it? Yeah, it was the first one in Asia and the first one in the world for like a woman to have a man's hands. Um but the poor gentleman, he died in a um cy- like car crash or cycling accident. Something. But now he's given now she's got oh, it's just no. I don't know. Imagine imagine if you could just like if Alex I'm too lazy, right? But if Alex works out for a long time <laughs> Can we then go into like surgery and just swap muscles over? <laughs> and just surgery remove Alex's muscles and put them on me. So instead of and like can, being he, he can an, take um, my muscles back. <laughs> so instead of being a surrogate for babies, <laughs> like people like yeah. muscle surrogates. And then and then I'll I'll have Alex's for a while. Well. Then Alex, really you can go train my uh, muscles, and then you give me back again at the end, and we're back to where we <laughs> now I got bigger muscles. <laughs> I was going to say there was there wasn't much longevity in that in that job, or if you want to call it that, because you you'd like oh yeah it worked out giving them my arms and like oh wait I have nothing left. I don't <laughs> do it again. You build the new ones. Just, you would get PT of the year in my books if you could do that for just, me. PT of the year. Something I uh, something I dug up. Um, I remember that I had this and I forgot that it was actually about blood. It's something that I did in school when I was a kid. Um, it was a pamphlet about blood, but it just reminded me with the cell <laughs> regeneration piece. How do you... Okay. He went so off. Re- so you had that at hand? <laughs> huh? You had that at hand? It was just like, oh, it's over there. <laughs> so was like, did you, did you not see me get off? It was poking out, it was poking out, out of his cupboard. I was like, why did he just... <laughs> you're in, you in, in, like... You got all, do you have all your work from when you were a kid in your room? Do I have what? Do you have, like... Like, if you said to me now, like, I, I did a piece of work when I was a kid at school, <laughs> it wouldn't be in my room. <laughs> well, okay. Bear in mind, I, I, live, I live in a room, don't I? Like, I'm in a shared house. So where okay. am I going to keep it in the kitchen? Like, <laughs> I, I keep it in my mum's house, to be honest. I yeah, I've like, why is the... it with you? That's so funny. I have, a, I have a folder of, like... I don't have, like... I don't know why this is just, there, to be honest. I have a folder of, like, like, like... If you live in a room grades. and you're, you're still <laughs> keeping stuff from... 20 well, no, 10 years ago it feels like it's not even you've got that a whole wall just of like, just your life no, cuz like no to me of like um my certificates and things like that cuz i've needed it for visas and stuff and i guess oh, it's okay, just yeah. in there with it but i've got some <laughs> just in case they wanted <laughs> yeah, to know if you like, knew anything about blood yeah you like know what? it's so specific <laughs> if you're if you're thinking about rejecting me i have this pamphlet about blood so it's not like, it's not like... no, you know what it is <laughs> The reason I it's remember like, that I have this as well. It's not like well. the Romeo and Juliet book or something. Like it's such a specific <laughs> piece of information, which is key to this article. <laughs> well, the, re- the reason I remember I had this specific thing is because I was proud of it. Like, look, look at the colours on it. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh yeah, very nice, very nice. But there was, Put it on your there was a fact. There was a fact on the back that said, because um, we're talking about regeneration of cells. It's every seven years. And the reason I remember that is because of things like this. One but minute warning. White blood cells live for 40 years. Just, it, white blood cells live for 40 years? Yeah. So red blood cells only last 120 days. White blood cells, 40 years. Wow. That's crazy. Years. And if you wow. think quite relevant to today's world, that's why we can have immunity to things in that because when it comes to the training of white blood cells, mm-hmm. their memory would be a lot longer because they last a long time. I just made wow. the last bit up, but it sounds good, right? Yeah, that's yeah. actually pretty interesting. <laughs> it does sound good. <laughs> Thank you. It's interesting that it lasts for 40 years. Year 10. After 40, you start getting sick easy, do you? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh. That that pamphlets uh, lasted as long as the white blood cells. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, old, how old do you think I am? Then? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nearly, nearly. <laughs> oh, that was That's brilliant. Funny. I didn't want to bring this up, but I'm going to add it up anyway. What? So, do you remember the Seinfeld? Um, episode where she what is it with you in Seinfeld? I love Seinfeld. I know, this but guy. This like I've only he, noticed it recently though. He was he, <laughs> he was dating he was dating a woman and she's she was very very pretty, but she had man hands. So every time like like they'd cut away 
to like um anything to do with her hands and there was like something on uh Jerry's face and she reaches over to reach uh, to take the eyelash off off his face but it was this gigantic hand <laughs> Like on his cheek, trying to take off the eyelash, and he's you could see his face like like getting deformed Scary. because of, because of the uh, like pressure that this big hands were like. <laughs> and there was another one. Jerry goes, um, oh, "I'd love a bee." So she gets a bee and she just opens it with her man. <laughs> and Jerry goes, "Oh, that wasn't a twist top." <laughs> <laughs> so was he, was he put off of her? Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> okay, so coronavirus, games, football games, stadium games, NBA, everything's been just, F1. you know, F off, oh, Formula One, everything's been cancelled or postponed or changed, right? Yeah, work, so, work be there at 7.05. Yeah, yeah. Other than <laughs> Sorry, work. that was a meme. <laughs> other than work. <laughs> um, so Man United had a game in the Europa League quarterfinals. Um, who are they playing? I think Lask. 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 Okay, they're playing a team called Lask in Austria. Okay, so no fans allowed. This was a closed. Is it closed door? Closed door games or whatever. Behind closed doors. Behind closed doors. So they're playing, and someone gets injured. I think, or someone goes down. Um, and all you hear, I think it was a Manu player that went down. All you hear was this. So it's a worry for Manchester United. So it was just this one guy. One fan. Chanting. <laughs> For Man U saying, we love United. Well, you heard it, Man right? Man U, <laughs> love United. We do. Um, <laughs> so they reckon, they don't even know. They actually don't know where the sound came from, right? They think that this one guy probably just somehow snuck in to the stadium yeah. and had like access to the media area. Or he's had some incredibly loud voice and he was standing outside the, the stadium like chanting that. But <laughs> <laughs> like that, I like that theory better. <laughs> but literally it was just and they apparently the atmosphere or just the the fact that it was just that one voice, it was like had so much meaning. Creepy. Yeah, it's a lot of impact. Yeah. A lot of impact. Oh. It's, it's, uh... And then, like, I think a few others from outside the stadium heard and they were all, they started as well. But apparently, Man U has the, like, biggest travelling fan base out of all the teams. Is that really? right? I don't know. I read that somewhere. That's a diehard fan. And then they fan. travel from the UK. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, go, is it yeah. all the travelling fan base? The world. Yeah, like, they just, travelling fan base, that's what I mean. No, that's what we're saying. Is it actually a travelling fan base or they've just got a lot of fans all over the world? They, I no think, traveling. I think fan both. Base. They have a large traveling fan base, but they also got a large fan base. Yeah. There's in Banbury, I know about five to ten people that traveled and watched United everywhere they go. Really? Really. It's incredible. Mm. I think Most United are definitely the biggest fortune. in the in England. They they definitely got the most amount of fans, which are like very loyal fans. If you know what I mean. Mm. There's a lot of other clubs which have a lot of fans, especially in London, have a lot of fans, but they're not like. As diehard, like it's not as. See, I thought Man United to them. Man United to me was always the biggest. Like from speak to different people around the world, it was always the biggest casual fan base. I knew like they had a huge casual fan base, but I didn't know yeah, from they, a loyal fan base it was that big. No, they also have that because they're so big. What's interesting mm. is like around the world. I, I, when I went traveling, I met a guy who was from India, and he said he supported Man United, and he chose Man United because he wanted to support the underdogs. What? And the reason that was was because in India there was only if you could only ever watch if it was Man United against Arsenal or Liverpool Arsenal or Arsenal Liverpool, right? There was only those three games that would ever come on. What? From the first so you you didn't get to see all the lower teams. Like you, you didn't have a choice to support them because the only teams you they would show were these big teams wow. because Man United, Liverpool, and Arsenal were trying to create. Uh, Man United, yeah, Man United, Liverpool, and Arsenal were trying to create a brand globally and like to build that reputation. So they were the only ones that were consistently played. And the first game he ever watched, it was Arsenal against Man United, and Man United were two one down, 
and they were like playing quite well. So he started supporting Man United and then Man United come back to draw that game. And then from then onwards, he followed United because he was like, yeah, I want this underdog team to, uh. <laughs> you know, this club. And then obviously they're the biggest, like the biggest club maybe after Real Madrid in the world. So he, he only thought there was three, the it was a three, it was a three team comp. <laughs> This guy. They, they knew there was more teams, but they just didn't get to see them, or at least see not yeah. regularly. Yeah. Like they might show United if it's an important game for Man United, they'll show them against that team. But I otherwise, what... it's only the big games were shown. I was gonna say, I wonder what his reaction would have been the first time he Googled them and realised they were like <laughs> top of the tables. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was like this was like how old is he? This must have been like early two thousand. So he probably this, he probably didn't even have a computer or anything back then. Like it's it just it was mm. just on your TV, right? That's what I'm saying. I imagine like so. I imagine now, years down the line, he's been thinking these oh, underdogs, yeah. and now he googles yeah. them. It's like, oh, oh wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> nah, but if he followed them for those seasons, he would have realized pretty quickly that oh, these guys are good. <laughs> that was like in their heyday as well. But that's like, what I'm saying. Like all the about. people that used to support him. I remember when I was at school, everyone would be like, "Oh, you're just a glory, glory supporter." Yeah, <laughs> that was exactly the same. <laughs> glory. Yeah. Um, just a just a just a fun. Um, hypothetical, right? So mm. Germany, the German league have said that they're probably not going to be able to finish their league. So there'll be no champion. So there'll be no relegation and there'll be no um, promotion. Th that'll just be, that'll be the end of the season and they'll restart next season, right? So as, as if it never happened. As if it never happened. So the Premier League, they're thinking of doing that in the Premier League. And Liverpool oh. are 25 <laughs> points clear, right? Aren't they only if, two games away from guaranteeing winning? One game, one game. So if one. Man City versus Arsenal and Arsenal won, <laughs> they would have won it. They would have won it. Even if they didn't turn up to any of the games, they would have won the Premier League, right? But they're thinking of scrapping the no promotions. No one wins it, right? And a lot of people, it's like there's a lot of memes that are coming out like, oh, you're not going to win the Premier League. And uh, what do you call it? I think Guardiolo said that uh, Liverpool won't win the, the Premier League or something. You'd think if there was just one uh, game away, they'd be like, oh, all right. My coronavirus. You you can have it. You've, you, you're going to win anyway. Mate, coronavirus. I hope Liverpool, you know, unlucky Liverpool. <laughs> Liverpool is not you're lucky CJ's not here. <laughs> So I had an interesting uh, information that, what's his name? Neil deGrasse Tyson passed on to me, personally. Um, <laughs> which I was, I was, no, I was just listening to uh, his- Is this from your school days again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was listening to his show before we started recording, like before we got on the call. Um, and they just said something which I thought was fascinating. It was like, I have to share it with the guys. Um, Go. So it was there were the whole episode was talking about self driving cars and they're talking about like the implementation of it, what it's actually gonna look like and what the implications are and blah 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 blah. Um they were talking about uh like costs and all that kind of let me let me pull this around so I don't have to look to the side. Um I tried to jot down notes to try and write it because I I've gotta try and read them now, but basically they were saying because they were talking about like when you have cars, when you have self driving cars, you're in a position now where if you people think you're going to own a self-driving car, whereas you wouldn't necessarily, there would be self-driving cars. You would use it when you are out of it. Then it would go pick up someone else. Um, so saying it's kind of replacing what taxis do. But did you know? First of all, for every mile that a taxi drives with a passenger, it drives six tenths of a mile searching for a passenger. So oh, if you put, I did not know that. So. <laughs> Correct answer. There's a lot. There's a, me. This sort of leads on to things. Um, okay. So with how much? Six with tenth, oh, sorry, every mile it drives. It so drives every mile it drives with a passenger. A mile. It also drives sixty percent of a mile looking for a passenger. Searching. Whereas okay. with self-driving cars, what they're suggesting is that would be cut down to 0 0.05 miles because of Wi-Fi connectivity, all this kind of stuff. It could go directly. Point zero five miles. Point zero five miles. Wow. Um, okay. Which is significant reduction. So then they're saying, yeah. and then if you take um, a car, if you take like owning a car and stuff like that, like the out of pocket expense of owning and parking cars is roughly 75 cents per
per mile. This is an Amer- obviously they're, they're in America, so they're talking American economy. Um, seventy five cents a mile, and this because of obviously negating parking and owning car would drop it down to less than twenty cents a mile. Oh. So you saved distance, well, you saved well. time. Now taking it a step further, they're saying the fiftieth percentile income there is twenty five dollars an hour. So if you were to drive the average speed, which is in urban area, 25 miles per hour, that's $1 per mile. Your your cost of your hourly, uh, I'm not wording this anywhere near as well as they are, but like your worth is, is $1 per mile at that mm. rate, right? And they said, um, you include that with the expense of owning the car at 75 cents, it's $1.75 per mile. Um, that cost could effectively drop down to 25 cents a mile. So a reduction of $1.50 on $1.75 I don't know, percentage, a large percentage of that. Um, so they said, now, factoring all that information, if you had a, uh, the average driving in the US among all drivers is 3 trillion miles over the course of a year. Oh my god! Which uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson jumped in and let us know that's half a light year, by the way, in case you're wondering how far a light year is. <laughs> half a light year? Half a light year. In one year, in one US year. US drive half a light year every year. Yeah. Imagine they did it all in one direction. I think mine's blown away. I've just, I've just got Maxi bought into this one. <laughs> yeah. He's <laughs> like all in now. Half a light year. Which? Mad. So now, remember, we talked about reduction <laughs> of cost goes from 175 down to 25 cents, so a dollar fifty reduction, right? That would be the, the potential conservative implications. They're saying if. Now, you take that half a light year, the distance people drive, if you can reduce the cost per mile by only 10 cents, not a dollar fifty, only 10 cents, that's a saving of $300 billion. Mm-hmm. So if you think about the potential implications of self-driving cars, economically, could be astronomical. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, hmm. Who owns the cars, though? Is it like... Instead of the taxi driver driving, is like I, I'll I, I buy get, one of those. I got a bit confused of how. Yeah, I got a bit confused of how you decided that the cost dropped so much for the person using the car. Because you don't own the car to start with, so your cost of owning a car yeah. gets eliminated completely. Owning and parking. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then use of a car. I think it's related to the the travel. Like for example, like the distance in travel when searching for like because now cars are essentially taxis. The reduction mm-hmm. of cost of being a self-driving car versus a taxi, not having to search for passengers. You're reducing that search by... So we're comparing it to somebody that always takes taxis? No, no, no. They're talking about the... the if you take an implication of travel, of what... Bearing in mind, yeah. first of all, I want to... Let me put this in perspective. I'm relaying information from an expert yeah. nowhere near as eloquently as they've given it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm also I'm at the very you remember beginning the information. Of the so I'm trying to <laughs> trying to get it clear. Um, I don't remember exactly. Or I just wrote down like the numbers and the important pieces. I didn't. I didn't write down everything. Um, but the they were talk essentially. I was only at the beginning of the podcast. There's still a lot more to go. I was probably about like twelve minutes in. It's about an hour long. Oh, okay. But they've got um, it, he's he's talking to Neil deGrasse Tyson is talking to an expert in the automo- in the self driving automotive industry and also someone else i can't remember where he's from but they're just talking about it and the the possible implications and everything i just thought it was really fascinating to see one i didn't like the the taxi thing i, I all of those pieces of information i found interesting so i brought them to the table but as, mm. as a totality the fact that you could reduce expenditure by quite a significant amount like that 300 billion again is one fifteenth of what they're suggesting are the actual changes that could happen um, who knows what other implied costs there could be aside from that? But yeah, no. My criticism would be that um, self-driving cars. When he talks about how much they spend time searching for people and stuff, this is probably the most. Like, if they took an average of people and included everyone that lived in dense areas, then obviously that works. But I I think it's much more economically viable for everyone to use public transport than it is for them to use self-driving cars um so when most people that drive the long distances are people that don't live in the city right and mm. then does that the self-driving You're, cars still have the same benefits uh, that put forward 
I don't know. I, 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 I need to watch it. My point is, in America, they're trying to replace cars with self-driving cars as a solution, whereas in Europe, it's more about replacing cars with public transport. Uh, oh right that is interesting gotcha. and right, right, right the main point was in dense cities where self-driving whenever they talk about self-driving cars being very efficient is in dense cities because they right. can pick up people quickly and move around but the problem is it doesn't beat public transport in most times like a self-driving bus is still much better than a self-driving car yeah. and then where you use self-driving cars is in the suburbs to get people to the public transport areas maybe so it's like a bigger system so i think it's often oversimplified especially by americans of self-driving versus driving cars when i think you should look at the whole transport system yeah can you hear me still yeah yeah Yeah. and then the the last point is he took obviously when they talk about how efficient cars are the self-driving cars are they're going to talk about dense cities but then the stat which says how many miles they drive is going to talk mainly or a lot of that's going to come from people that live away from the cities because they're the ones more likely to be driving that makes sense Uh, but because it's from a good source, I think they probably have considered some of that, but it'd be interesting to see if they have considered public transport or the wider transport picture instead of just one case against yeah. another, if that makes sense. I think. So when they when yeah. they talk about self-driving, yeah, I wonder if they, like, even though they use the word cars, if they mean specifically cars, because essentially even that system that he refers to, even if it was cars, would still be then a form of public transport. Um, but if maybe they then just scaled up the vehicle sizes instead, like you're saying. So. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but then obviously when coronavirus comes around, you're going to want your own self-driving car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The B-Side Word. Make sure if you enjoyed it to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe and drop us your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit the bell, hit the bell. Hit the bell, hit the bell. bell.